All right, let's talk about LCS. By the way, first things first, one thing we need to mention at the outset of this discussion is, as I have referenced on past episodes, obviously, ye old John Needham was full of shite, wasn't he? Because he implied <laughs> that since a day before the off-season began of the free agency, that t- these two teams, Evil Geniuses and Golden Guardians, exited the space, there would still be time for those players to get spots. Spoiler, as far as I know, not a single player on those lineups is getting a spot. So the first thing to say in the context of this discussion is, if you go and look at EG and Golden Guardians, look, there's not as many on EG, there's a lot on Golden Guardians, Guardians. Some of these players should be in the LCS, and I would even pick them over some of the other names signed. But they obviously, it came too late in the process. So at that point in time, they've all everyone else has signed their squad. So we're going to have to sort of pretend the Golden Guardians EG players don't exist when we evaluate the other squads, because functionally they didn't until one second before everyone signed on the dotted line, basically. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting. So uh, Jacob Wolf also released an article that kind of laid out the timelines for the teams exiting as well. If you guys haven't checked that out, um, it's it's very explicit in what it says. And uh, honestly, it does sound like there was some confusion on the Golden Guardian side about how this was coming down, at least with the direct management of the teams. I suspect what happens is that the ownership of Golden Guardians was making decisions that the management of the team didn't really know about. So they were proceeding as if it was business as usual and kind of got the rug pulled out from under them in the same way that the players and and the coaches did, um, which makes sense. You don't want to, I mean, it's not super nice, but if you don't want to incite to panic within the team while you're making a decision, obviously, uh, and you don't want it to leak, Considering how leaky esports is, perhaps you don't message everybody on the team. And it sounds like the decision was made relatively relatively quickly as well. Um, but it was something that was actually petitioned for. The the downsizing of the league was petitioned for very heavily by a lot of the teams. Steve Aronset, Liquid Steve, um, apparently was handing out presentations that he had made about why they should downsize the league and then all the teams were given that opportunity but it sounded like ultimately riot made the decision to make the offer to the teams and then was going to kind of stand by and hope that a couple of them took it so they could end up with eight teams rather than seven or nine which would have been very awkward numbers to operate a format with Oh, by the way, I was talking actually two of them. Obviously, who he and River are apparently on teams, but those are the only ones, as far as I know, out of those ten players that survived the calling, as it were. <laughs> well, I think a lot of them were also off the team already. Um, that okay. they had, that you know, they had made probably previous arrangements. Because that's the thing is that even though technically the free agency period doesn't hit until the Monday after the World Championship, most of the time the teams have given the players the opportunity to talk to other teams. And it's not an official contract yet, but basically everybody knows the deals are done. They just have to be signed uh, because the negotiation has really already occurred. And it's very surprising if somebody makes an unexpected move on that first day of free agency because uh, teams want to have their rosters ready to go. So it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, River was already out, already planning to head over to 100 Thieves at that point in time. Um, who he, the signing came a bit later. So perhaps that was that was something that that may have that may have It'll changed. Probably wait for Ignard to go to LEC or whatever. Yeah. Maybe that I think they, last second who knows, right? I, I think they probably tried to run back that roster, and then when Ignar decided to to head over to Excel, that's when they they needed to make a change and who he would be an obvious player to fill that gap um, for Ignar. Um, by the way, yeah. let's just start with that team, Monty. They were the best NA team by the end, all, both at Worlds and in summer. What do you think of NRG essentially just swapping Ignar for who he? Look, I think they'll probably be a little bit more versatile, um, it, perhaps in a non-engage meta. But I think probably NRG has peaked as a roster. If I'm going to be honest, like I I don't really see them being able to compete with a team like the one that Cloud9 has put together, that FlyQuest has put together. Probably they're going to be a couple other surprises within the mix of players, given the number of rookies that are involved. Um, but NRG, I think, is probably optimistically a third-place team. They really were able to 
take advantage of the fact that Golden Guardians appeared to collapse internally and that MS was really just bad uh, and was the major hurdle that was preventing Cloud9 from beating them. Um, with JoJo Pion on Cloud9 and Vulcan back on Cloud9, that roster just seems a lot stronger. So even though, you know, we saw some we saw some good steps forward, I think, from Contracts and Palafox, Contracts in particular is a very known quantity, and I just don't think we're going to see another insane game from him or insane series from him. I think he, like, peaked in that G2 series. That's what I think. You know what I love is you've literally just given 100% the opposite analysis to every shithead fan who tells us we know nothing about League. Because to them, Monty, no, no, it's the other way. You've got it all wrong, Monty. You're talking about fundamental qualities and tendencies and player career histories. And then you're mixing in player individual form graphs. No, no, League of Legends is an anime, Monty. And now that contracts oh. and Fox have reached Super Saiyan level three, they will either maintain or go to Super Saiyan level four. And because NRG signed ah. contracts to pay them again this year, they have developed more NA talent <laughs> and they will continue to develop. For some reason, everyone else will stay still because they're, they're not they're... from NA and they will just become even better. So problem solved, they'll probably be the 18 and zeros player. And, you know. and every single player develops infinitely. It's just always Boss. up and to the right. It's an yep. exponential development curve, which is why the yep. oldest players are always the best players, right? Right? <laughs> Problem solved, exactly. You just solved the game. No, because the sad thing is, I think you're totally right, mate. Like, the thing about this team is, it's a canny squad. I like the way they actually play League of Legends. I do enjoy watching them. But, and by the way, I have always wanted there to be a team that has, like, some balls in fucking macro to punish NA because that's where everyone really did just used to get together, wait at mid lane, 5v5, and then have a team fight and then go to Baron. Like, I actually like that there's a team that will make like cross map players, will do like fucking moves, actually has some balls, will be decisive in fights. The problem is, like you say, the rest of this, the, this is where you fuck up if you don't do the Bill Belichick. You go, well, I'm just going to keep what I have because I have the best team. Yes, but the other teams are changing to be better than you. That's the flaw <laughs> with that thinking. You aren't competing against yourself from last year. You're competing against the rest of the field. And so, like we're saying, by the end of summer, that was one of the weakest LCS fields I've ever seen, ever in the history of the region. Like, think about it. The top teams, like we're saying about the MLS, it didn't matter that you have Blabber and Berserk. It wasn't enough. You can't just smurf. This isn't the days where I've got Bjergsen, double try, win automatically. Those days have gone. So to me, I actually think when you run this team back, you're going to be borderline to make worlds. I'm just saying it. Like, you're going to be the third or fourth seed. You aren't going to be a champion, in my opinion. I don't think you even have a chance. that, Like, because here's the problem. If you're the fan, you're supposed to go, right, now this is the, when Paula Fox is going to be the MVP and they're going to pop off and Contracts is all LAX, LCS first jungler. Nah, I don't think so, I'm afraid. Like you say, I think there's enough contenders have been formed around them that this can be a canny squad, but I don't think they're going to be the best. I have no reason for them to be the best, I'm afraid. Yeah. And you know, if anything, if anything, they're just going to be boosted by the fact that a lot of these LCS teams just look fucking terrible. Like I thought, Thorin, I thought that the theory behind having fewer teams in the LCS was was going to mean that there would be a higher concentration of talent and more competitiveness. Right. But that's just not the case in what we're looking at right now. Now, part of it is it is the fact that players like licorice and players like revenge are simply just not in the league now which is outrageous because there is no universe where you can tell me that licorice and revenge are worse than fake god fake god was trash last time he was in the lcs he was terrible and yet he has a starting roster spot on shopify rebellion over those two players. Now, of course, those two players were kind of dumped because they were the on the teams that left the league, and that's just kind of unlucky for them. But Shopify Rebellion's roster of Fake God, Boogie, Insanity, Bivoy, and Zazel is like, what do we think this roster is going to do? It's ass. This is ass. <laughs> man, this team, come on. It's not even good on paper. Never mind anything else. It's just ass in it. Like, who cares? Like, the insanity just, guy's in hell, as far as I can tell. I don't know what, what he's doing wrong. He seemed like he was progressive. Like, he's just in hell. I agree. His team's garbage. I mean, Boogie, Boogie was kind of 
over delivered, I would say. But so many of these rosters are just going mega budget, dude. They're like going starting like basically minimum salaries or maybe just above it. And that's why we get that's why we're getting, you know, 100 of these being sniper, obviously a touted you know, up and coming NA player. Oh. So I'm willing to give that a shake, right? River, who is genuinely good last year. Quid, who is extremely underwhelming. And then you have Meech, a rookie bot laner, and Isla, who we know Isla. Isla is not good, guys. Isla is not a good player. Uh, he is very weak mechanically. He's just, he's not going to take that next step. Like, I hate to say he's just not going to take that next step. And the teams that are actually spending... Our FlyQuest, obviously, they get Bwipo, they get Inspired, they get Jensen, right? Busio, so uh, Busio comes from the 100 Thieves, you know, training program that Papa Smithy helped develop. Now, of course, Papa Smithy is running FlyQuest, so Busio goes and tags along with him over there. Long relationship. And Masu, at least, you know, we see an up-and-coming AD carry. Maybe he's better than Yun. It wouldn't take a lot. But the top side of the map is a bunch of super veterans who can cover, I think, a lot of the holes in this roster. So, I'm at least I was hyped for FlyQuest last year, too, because that was an on paper roster. But this one, it seems like it would be hard to go wrong with this many veterans. Like, it feels like it would be very, very difficult for this team to be as bad as FlyQuest, like 10th place bad. Right. I mean, the joke of the Shopify Rebellion one as well. It's like your sponsor is Shopify and you are terrible at commerce and don't seem to know what you're doing. And again, wrecked on deals all day long. And you've ended up with like porn stars. There's nothing at the end. Like best. Can I have some competent LCS players? Best I can do. Thank God. It's like, what's going on here? What the fuck is going on? No, if you look at the other teams, I actually think people are sleeping on the FlyQuest one because a lot of people's whole shit is like, but, but. The bot lane, but the but the bot lane, first of all, bot lanes aren't even that fucking good in LCS. Why, why are we talking like the fucking killer role? And then, as you say, the top side of the map could win you so many games, it's mental. Like, your solos should be some of the best in the whole LCS. Like, I don't care that, like, Whippo's teams didn't make it. He was good. He actually was one of the best pieces on Team yes. Liquid. Jensen was good even on fucking really bad Dignitas, who at one point in time looked shit and then got better as the split went on. And the thing is, Jensen's Inspired, good enough. just a monster. He's good enough. Who the fuck is going to take down Jensen in this league outside of Jojo Pian? Remember, it's Mask, APA, Insanity, Quid. These are the names that Jensen has to compete with. Are we really so far out on Jensen that we think he can't roll with and be at least a top five mid laner in this league? I think Flyco is pretty good. I actually do think that... Um... I mean, probably the most slept on roster probably is the Team Liquid one, because obviously I understand people have no idea who Umti is. If people don't know, that's a veteran LCK jungler who's been on a bunch of teams. And there's times when he was a solid player. Like, he definitely he wasn't was, a bomb. Like, he'll be good in the LCS. Good. He is good. Sure. He is legitimately a very good player. People... People have this idea about Umti because he's one of those players who is like a good player on a series of bad teams. And because this guy has been stuck on Breon for like three years now, they think he's shit. He is not shit. Like his career dates back to Jin Air in 2016, like 2016, 2017. Um, he yep. was on KT. Uh, this guy also, his English is excellent, which is another reason why he probably should have come to the West sooner. And he's more of an outgoing personality. So this guy, I, I think, had stayed in Korea for too long being on bad Breon rosters. Like, he is actually good. This, this to me, makes more sense as a signing than Pioshik did, even though Pioshik oh, was the literal world champion last season. Because the value you're going to get from this guy, like the amount you're, spend, you're spending versus the amount good he is, is actually, you probably get a great value here. You probably get a very, very good value. Um, oh, I hinted at it earlier. The only problem I have with this team is just who they kept as ADC. Like, look at the rest of the team. Impact came in. By the way, I still think Impact's really good. If I'm yep. Cloud9, I'd have been going home to get an Impact back. I think he's one of those players. That, he, every year, he's good. Every single year of his career. You've kept, you've got Umti, who's actually, like you say, like, I think a sleeper. Really good pickup. You kept APA, who looked pretty promising, showed some stuff. Kodja J is your team captain. Why they've kept Yon is the one I, that, that just puzzles me. How, how many chances does this guy get yeah, i don't get it man he's just very mid to me he's just just whatever well especially because there are a bunch of 
rookie 80 carries that are starting within this league. Why couldn't they get any of them? Uh, they're clearly not going with the Korean language speaking project because they kept APA. And look, APA, does APA have a limited champion pool? Yes, he does. What I like about APA, though, is he is he actually tries to make plays, right? If he can work out some of the champion pool issue, expand his champion pool, he is an aggressive player. He is rather fearless. He will go in and try and be the guy, and he doesn't play like a damn coward. So I'm willing. He was kind of slotted in at the last second, um, halfway through a summer split. He hasn't had that much time to develop himself. If he has been able to do a lot of good work at the at their boot camping and their training in Korea, if he's able to expand and like get some really good coaching during his his time. Um, in between seasons, then I think we have to see if he's going to take the next step. But I think he deserves to at least try to do that, right? Monty, you know there's a story that came out that connects to last week's opening discussion about Doublelift's career. Oh, boy. This will blow your mind, Monty. Imagine Doublelift saying something which doesn't even make sense from what he's saying the day earlier. Imagine that premise. So you know how Doublelift chose to retire? and It's because teams aren't yes. building top squads and then are competitive. And plus, he has other things he wants to do in his life now and he wants a family. Yeah, yeah, that's all nonsense. He was apparently going to join Team Liquid. You know how that other time he uh, he like uh, took a step back and he didn't want to play anymore and he had problems with TSM, except actually he was going to be in TSM or Evil Geniuses, but it didn't happen. And so then he just turned against it. Like, I've seen this fucking, I've seen this start, this film before, guys. What is this? Like, this guy's so two-faced, it's nuts in it. The joke is, though, he's not even intentionally two-faced. I genuinely believe at the end of the day, he, at something inside his brain does like a little men in black, like, <laughs> and then he just forgets all that he said. He wakes up fresh the next day and just reacts fresh to everything. Yeah. He goes, actually, you know what? I want to retire. It's not for me. League of Legends, not really the game for me. I couldn't have done another year. Like, And then a day before, you're like, what? You were going to sign without it? Like, this guy's nuts, mate. He's so ridiculous. <laughs> I almost love how predictable he is, though. <laughs> Why didn't he join Team Liquid? Because it seems like they could use him. Frankly, he'd be a massive upgrade. Well, I don't know if this story is true. It did come from ye old Leak Central. But ah. supposedly the story goes that people claim Dodo, the GM, like blocked him. Because if you remember, Dodo was one of the ones when he got <laughs> kicked out of Team Liquid that supposedly wanted him out the door. And if you don't know the Dodo guy, he is way more so. I know he is like Korean. He is way more sort of the Korean ethic of sort of like, if you're going to be someone like Doublet is being known to actually straight up say out loud, split, split, does it matter? Like, Koreans don't fuck with that. I'll tell you that right now. That is not what you can't just go, you know what? I think I'll start working this summer, maybe. I mean, that same it's February that, bro you know what I mean like <laughs> that to be fair that same guy then turned around and hired Summit and he also built the seven million dollar roster super team so I'm not sure that guy can actually be trusted in terms of jamming at this point in time because it feels like maybe you do get double lift because if you actually have a decent carry on that roster because honestly like that was liquid's problem last season is that their their carry positions of mid and adc were so weak that there was no chance of them actually doing well and now you have impact instead of summit who's a weak side player who the fuck is going to carry this roster like i could love umpty but like who is umpty supposed to help here you, you better, Liquid fans better be praying that APA becomes a boss mid laner next year because, guys, there's no hope for Young. I, I hate to say it. He's had a year. There there was no improvement. It's it's over for him. It's over for Young. He's not going to be amazing. You may think he looks amazing at the beginning because he has to go up against Meech, Masu, Tomo, and Bivoy. Okay? A lot of these players are going to be new or are very underwhelming themselves. But there's no shot that this guy does anything spectacular in this coming year. He's not that guy. So you better hope it's APA or you better hope they make a roster change because Team Liquid right now is has no bite to them whatsoever. And this just goes on with the long list of extremely poorly GM'd Team Liquid rosters that we have seen since the Super Team version of Team Liquid collapsed, right? It has been a total disaster. They have wasted so much money. The rosters they make don't make any sense on paper. It is wild. Of shit. 
Sadly, not the era to be a team like Fan, is it? So <laughs> this is also where I've got to say that makes me really wonder about the core JJ angle though, Monty, because it's implied that like he's the one that they've stuck within their team and built around. Like, if he's having any input into these teams, fucking hang up the phone, idiot. You can let him play in your team, like, but don't let the guy just keep picking. Like if he's the one vouching for Yon, here's the problem I have, Monty. I'm being serious right now. You've got to have skin in the game. If you vouch for someone and then they fail and cost me millions, Where's the where's the where's the splashback on you? That means that in the future I have to not listen to you. I have to tell you shut the fuck up. Like you're fucking ruining it. Just play the game. I hire you to be the captain. You know fucking shot call. I'll I'll handle the the fucking rosters, mate. Like because I I can't handle how bad these rosters are. And the worst thing is like the implication is that it is just some balls or like get me Bjergsen. Like it's just some fucking shit. Get Summit back. Oh, he was pretty good, wasn't he? I didn't just watch the Summit one was the biggest out. mystery. The after after Whatever. everything that happened in Cloud Nine with that guy's attitude, the fact that you're like, who should we call? Uh, Summit. Hello, big North American yeah, contract for Team Liquid. If, if Summit dies and the Grim Reaper comes to him and goes, "Would you care for a game of chess?" Summit will go, "Yeah, I lock in Renekton." <laughs> or Jace. Oh, that's the analogy. <laughs> and he'll go, that's actually not viable in this game. It's chess. <laughs> but I'm picking it anyway. So we're like, there you go. Like, okay, you lose. What's new? That's where they actually went to Worlds. That's how bad LCS is. That team went to Worlds. That team was in Worlds, bro. But to be fair, they did go to Worlds and lose to Gigabyte Marines, which is banter as fuck. That is fucking hilarious. I want to know, Kordjid, right? Which is worse? Failing with a super team and Bjergsen and Hansar and Whippo, $7 million, or going to Worlds and losing to Gigabyte Marines? Like, I don't need... That's a fucking Sophie's choice in a half. That's Carl's choice right there. I can't handle that, mate. And yet it keeps and then happening. The off season, in the offseason, though, Monty, he hits up, you know, double if gets the tech, hey, you up? <laughs> run, it, run it back next year. And then Dodo just steps in like the fucking, you know, they're, they're really like Christian, the fucking mom, like, hey, I told you to stay away from that guy. That, no, no, you're not coming in my double house. Lift. <laughs> exactly. Listen, after the shenanigans you pulled it from, you're not coming in. <laughs> if you really love Dean, you'd wait till marriage. Exactly. Like, I know what you mean. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, I, you know, I love, I love Dignitas, man. What are, what are these guys doing? So I understand oh, that at one point in time last year, Rich for a, a scant few weeks was potentially an MVP candidate of LCS. He was he good. Then, yeah. He then promptly fell off a cliff. Now Dove is a mid laner who turned top laner, who then turned mid laner again, and he was, he was a terrible top laner when he was on Live Sandbox. But he became a, a, a halfway decent mid laner once he was back in the LPL again. So I don't necessarily hate this signing if you're going to sign like a cheap potential veteran. It it really reminds me of the Gory signing that Golden Guardians did where they actually did get a lot of value out of Gory. Like Gory is not good enough to be in other regions, but he is good enough to be good in the LCS. And then, of course, we have XU, Tomo and Isles. What what are we doing with these guys? Like, I, I guess here we go again. One more round. You know, you know, one of the worst things they ever did in the LCS is it's like they use the logic that if you're from Oceanic region, that makes you automatically mysterious and sort of, ooh, enigmatic, ooh, it's, it's Australian, ooh. They're just <laughs> fucking bad players. Why are we signing these guys? Like, I don't get FBI's a banger. By the way, always slept on it by the LCS, apparently. Sure. There's like a couple of players have been really good. Some of these fucking Oceanic players, like, I, I would just gamble on the NA guy, mate. Like, what's, what's the upside here? They're not fucking studs. They're just all right. <laughs> what is it? I just love the fact that Rich Rich gets another rodeo, man. This is so funny. <laughs> Mate, all, I, all I'm going to say is this. I know that it's a banger line for marketing, but if you're still marketing something like four or plus years after he left the game, it's the faker of hots. Well, it's a shame we're playing League of Legends then, isn't it? You fucking moron. If this was hot, sounds like it'd be a banger signing. <laughs> Problem is, we're on no check notes. We're on League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, that if that's the first slide out of your mouth, it's game over already, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? Give me a break. It's like how uh Pumandu was the faker of chaos, the oh, the, yes, the yes, Korean yeah. like MOBA 
uh, Warcraft 3 mod True. that wasn't Dota. Like the Koreans played this chaos mod and Mandu, uh, the support, fakers for support, uh, was like the best, the best all time at that game. Same shit. It's just 10 years later and we still have Rich. But, you know, Bakery was the professional HOTS player who is the GM of that team. So as soon as Rich was available, he's there. He's, he's snagging his old HOTS buddy, bringing him into the roster. <laughs> and he's just, My he's going to build around him till the end of time. Now that he's finally got the singular piece that he was looking for this whole time that he's been on Dignitas, he's got it done. He's got it. Rich forever on Dignitas. <laughs> I just can't help it, Thorin. Some of these rosters are just fucking hilarious. Like, because you want what you want to ask is like, what I, what even is their notion of what they're trying to accomplish with the roster? Like this? You know what I, I mean? Remember I, I, that story that supposedly a bunch of teams could have taken this six million Monty and just fucked off out the league. What is Diggs' game plan? I don't get it, man. Like last year, if anything, they locked into the fact they could get Jensen and like Santorin. Some decent names were there this year. I don't, I don't know where the plan is. It's this is not. This is like seventh place written all over this team. Man. What are we doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I think they didn't want to take the six million just in case the asset goes up at a later date, Thorin. And I, I have a feeling that in these team participation agreements, there is some sort of mandate that Riot continues the LCS. So as long as they sit there and they just spend league minimum, they can actually make money. So why would they sell? And they just they think that Riot on a long enough timeline will either buy them out eventually to shut down the LCS because they would have to buy them out to shut down the LCS, which is reasonable, or the asset goes up in value. Like if you're, if you're Dignitas, now Dignitas is owned by Harris Blitzer, which is the same organization that owns the New Jersey Devils and they own the Washington Commanders now. Um, and so they have a lot of backing is the point, like the Golden State Warriors, but they're not as intimately tied into the, that organization as the Warriors is. And let's let's say you take Immortals, right? People might be surprised Immortals didn't want to bounce. Well, the thing is, Immortals is just an esports team. They have if they sell, they have no more value. Like they're like their investors are just shit out of luck. So they actually have no incentive to sell at a loss whatsoever. They might they might be willing to sell as a profit, but people were not offering them the twenty million dollars that or even $10 million that other teams got. So there's not really a lot of point for some of these organizations to just kind of bail out of this league when their only valuable assets are the slots themselves. And the, 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 the thing about these slots is they're either going to go up in value again because Riot figures out the economics of this league and people want to join, or on a long enough timeline, Riot is forced to revenue share with them. They operate at revenue neutral or with a slight profit, so they're not losing money. And then eventually Riot just buys them out anyway, right? They would have to buy them out to shut down the league. So... What do you got to lose by continuing to operate with kind of crap rosters? Like, I think it makes total sense. Dignity, uh, will to live, uh, <laughs> satisfaction in your job, feeling that you've done something meaningful in the world. You know, a lot of things. Sure. But, no, oh, tangibly, yeah. tangibly, no, no dollars and cents. The only but, real but, god but, of America. But, I understand Mammon is your fucking deity but, in America. Talk, talk. <laughs> but here's the thing, Thorin. The people... The people that are making the decision about selling the slot tonight or not are not the people who are spending any time on this team. They just hire people to deal with the day to day stuff. And it and oh. at the end, maybe they hit on a good rookie or, you know, they just pay these people not that much money, take their two billion dollars, use it to pay the roster and their staff. And that's it. Right. And that's why we have players like Mask and Castle being imported from Korea slash Europe where they were coming up. We have Ole back who I am happy about because I think Ole is legitimately a good player and is also fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> as evidenced by the fact that he was on this show and he told a story about how he tried to quit smoking cigarettes in playoffs one time, which didn't end well for him. Which is just one of the most insane things I've ever heard. Go back and watch that episode. It's very funny. Um, but yeah, Ole is back. He frequently climbs up to the top of the Korean ladder. He's been, you know, top three on the clear Korean ladder on multiple occasions. I'm actually just shocked Ole can't get an LCK team because I think he legitimately is good enough. But here he is on Immortals with Tactical, the bot lane that nobody wanted to see. Um, and yeah, just underwhelming rosters galore. But to answer your question, I'm not even sure it's the GMing Thorn. I think it is literally who can we get who is going to take the league minimum of $75,000 to come to North America? And here's the random team that exists as a result of that. Here's my question, though. 
Isn't there a world, though, where some of these Korean players might not even be bad Immortals, though? Couldn't they just, like, fuck around and end up with, like, the fifth best roster or Maybe, something? yeah. I don't know. Like, it's I mean, very possible. Dice, right? They're like, the dice. Could, could Ole and these other two Koreans, like, power Immortals to something good? Quite possibly, right? Quite possibly. Um, I, I think... I, <sighs> I don't know. I think it's I think this is like a really tough scenario for North America because this doesn't you know, what we're seeing doesn't inspire confidence that we're going to get LCS out of the LCS death spiral. Right. Because I look at these rosters and I am not excited to watch LCS. And the problem is LCS viewership continues to go down, 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 down. Now, Doublelift's not going to be playing. Even if he's co-streaming, he's going to be less of a draw than if he was playing. Because I guarantee you, more people want to watch Doublelift play League of Legends than want to hear Doublelift speak. Because, like, have you heard Doublelift speak, guys? It takes a very particular kind of person to enjoy that. Whereas, I think most of us League of Legends fans can enjoy Doublelift playing the game to at least a certain That's degree. Monty. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't think of this earlier. I can't believe I didn't even think of this earlier. In many ways, Monty, it's like in this off-season, Doublelift had a bunch of choices, right? And so he was presented with two doors. One of them leads to retirement, <laughs> and one leads back to the LCS. And you offered him, it was the Monty, you know, Monty <laughs> off-season <laughs> hall challenge, yeah, <laughs> or whatever it is. And you and you said, Doublelift, mathematically, which one should you do? He tried to join Team Liquid, but door, door blocked that door, and then he ended up choosing retirement. So... I know Meteos has already completely lost what everyone's on what they say. What are you talking about? Shakespeare? What's that all about? Check out the uh, episode. We'll link it here of like the when we got high and watched all those videos, basically. That's right. You can check out our esports cringe moments number two and enjoy the double lift Monty Hall problem. But yes, that's a it's a good analogy. So, you know, I don't know what we're supposed to like Thorne, tell me what I'm supposed to be excited about with LCS. Like I'm kind of excited about Cloud9 I mean, Cloud because the roster's pretty interesting. Yeah, I look, I do I wish that Wonder was on this roster instead of Fudge? Fuck yeah, I do. Do I wish that Impact was on this roster instead of Fudge? Fuck yes, I do. That would be hype because then I'd be excited for international play a bit. Yes. You know, if you had one of those top planners, yeah. Because Fudge Fudge had a splash, his first international tournament has been completely dead in the water internationally since that point in time. Um, am I excited about Vulcan being back on that roster? Fuck yes, I am. I think Vulcan will be very, very interesting with the rest of this roster. Certainly one of, if not the best support in the entire league, uh, even though obviously it was a bit rough on FlyQuest. Who else are we going to compare him to, guys? Yeah, tell me who the best support in North America. Are you still saying Core JJ? Like, come on, really? I think it's probably going to be Vulcan next year. Uh, not a lot of competition at the NA support position. So this roster feels like if Cloud9 doesn't fucking win, it's going to be... Pretty crazy because even though we like FlyQuest topside, it's not like Jensen is in his old form. Inspired's been on a break. I saw what happened to Jensen on a break. He lost his whole champion pool. Uh, Inspired also, you have to play Inspired style or your team is fucked. So will the team do that? They also have Busio, who's on his second season, and Masu, who is a complete rookie. So not going to take them. But Cloud9, this roster, anything less than the LCS title in spring is a massive letdown. Massive. I mean, bearing in mind two teams go to MSI, they're a lock for MSI, it feels like. If they don't, they've absolutely failed the whole fucking project. Like, I agree, it should be number one, minimum top two. In fact, you look at the team, it's not even like Fudge and Thieves should have problems in LCS. It's just, again, I don't believe in him internationally. I've just seen yeah. too many times where I think it's just whatever. So it's not an international play I'm concerned about. But even then, by the way, if Giorgio Pion does develop into the player everyone hopes he will, like the joke in this team is you have like three players that could be the MVP. It could be Blabba, Giorgio, or fucking Berserker. Like all these players could be the absolute best at their role. So, and I, and I think the Vulcan sound, like you said, it's just a slam dog. You basically showed up all the weaknesses minus the Fudge factor, as it were. But, it's not the end of the world. Look how shit the other rosters are, boys. Compared to that, this is a super team. Yeah. And and even, like you say, FlyQuest, which might be everybody's, like, next best team, is still going to be dependent on some level of rookie performance. And then outside of those two teams, like, NRG, well, they're a known quantity. Maybe they, they run it back a little bit. And those are the top three. But after that, it's a complete unknown. Like, I feel like it is very, very difficult to even start to consider who would be under that. And it's it's even hard to get excited about these teams. Like, 
I guess I'm minorly interested in seeing how Sniper does, you know, but it, it just feels so lackluster. See more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.